Today we're mastering your Neptune Apex to save your UV sterilizer from becoming a giant waste of money by solving the number one issue that potentially renders your UV useless from the get-go, getting the flow rate right. Because if you get it wrong, your UV just won't work. Not only that, but these things have a lot of seals where leaks could potentially happen, so we'll solve those as well and I've got some extra Apex tips to help you protect the bulb when your pump is off and protect your eyes when you get that reminder alert that it's time to swap it out or clean the quartz sleeve. So first things first, let's get that easiest setup task out of the way, which is hooking up your UV and pump, either a return pump or closed loop feed pump to your Apex. And here's how easy it is. Plug your pump into your Apex, find the return pump task function, Choose your pump outlet, rename it return pump or UV pump. Choose a feed cycle to turn the pump off during feeding, hit send, and you're done. So I do have an entire Master Your Apex episode on the return pump only that dives into a bunch of other tips. Specifically, we set up a maintenance mode so that we can shut the pump off for longer deep cleaning maintenance. If you want to do the same for your closed loop UV pump or UV feed pump, here's how you do it. Just click on the pump's gear icon, add a line that says if feed D000 then off. We set up feed D as a maintenance mode for a bunch of other gear in other episodes as well, but now your UV pump will turn off along with them and automatically back on when the time is up or you hit cancel. Now let's set up the UV sterilizer itself and this one is even easier than the pump. All we need to do is plug it in, find the outlet, hit the gear icon, rename it something like UV sterilize, choose advanced for the control type and put your fallback off and set on. Now there's only one line that we need to add. In this case, it's if outlet return pump off, then off and hit send. So what this line does is anytime your return or UV pumps off, your UV sterilizer bulb will also be off automatically, meaning you won't have to think about it when it comes time to pull the bulb and swap it out or clean the sleeve or that the UV is still on when water's not flowing through it. All right, so up next is setting the right flow rate, which is the most crucial part of optimal UV performance, where getting it wrong means it's just not going to work the way you hoped. Yes, you can do a bucket test method to measure the flow and time how long it takes to fill a gallon size container from your UV output or your overflows, but the real answer is by measuring the precise flow rate in real time with a flow meter. For example, this 18 watt Pentair UV has two very specific flow rate recommendations for targeting algae and bacteria sterilization at 219 to 356 gallons per hour, while for fish disease and pest control, the flow rate's 37 to 60 gallons per hour. And I don't know about you, but I personally know that I don't have the patience or timing skills to confidently calculate the flow rate inside those very specific ranges, let alone do it multiple times to dial it in just right, since I have an Apex and there's a flow sensor tool specifically designed for this purpose, I'm going to choose it 10 times out of 10 to get it right. With that, after you've plumbed in your flow sensor on your UV sterilizer, either before the input or after the output, keeping in mind that it is in a spot that makes it easy to remove for regular cleaning and maintenance, all you need to do is plug in the flow sensor into an FMM module and the FMM into your Apex and you're ready to go. Before we get into the flow sensor task function to set up alerts, let's pull down the new flow graph that showed up in the unused tiles bin and use the real-time flow rate to adjust your DC pump speed or the ball valve until you hit that UV's manufacturer recommended rate for the job you want it to do. For me, that's going to be 50 gallons per hour for controlling fish parasites, pests, and disease from my Pentair's 18 watt UV recommendation. When you've got your set, you can set up alerts and phone notifications if your UV flow falls outside of those recommended ranges using the flow sensor task function. Just choose the task, choose your FMM, choose sensor port and sensor size, and then set the min and max ranges accordingly like I did with 35 gallons per hour for the minimum and 63 gallons per hour for the maximum, and then push send. Not only will this help ensure that your UV stays within those recommended flow ranges, but the flow alerts will actually be an indicator for things gone wrong with your pump, like it's completely died, it's been turned down, it's gotten clogged or gummed up, or something might have bumped your valve, all of which you'll know the instant it happens. I've mentioned before in multiple episodes that the most important part of creating a tank that's safer for your home and pets 
are those types of immediate notifications, which leads to the next thing we'll set up for your UV sterilizer, power draw notifications for both the pump and the UV bulb. For your bulb, a power draw alarm can give you an indication of bulb life, tell you when it's burnt out or that one of your seals may have been compromised and water got inside the tube, all of which are important to catch early. Setting up power monitoring is another extremely easy task function to do where you find the power usage alarm task, choose your UV sterilized outlet, enter your min and max wattage draw and hit send. You can repeat the same process for your UV pump or return pump to monitor its maintenance needs and ID failures as well, but it's always best to let your pump or UV run for a few days first so that your Apex can refine those min and max ranges for you. Let's talk about leaks next because there are so many potential leak points on a UV sterilizer plumbing that it's inevitable to happen. Even Ryan's 360 has had a leaky UV sterilizer union that we didn't know about until there was a small puddle on the floor which is why I'm a huge advocate for installing leak sensors no matter what. So with that, let's set up an LDK leak detection kit so you're notified the second that water's not where it's supposed to be. Starting by placing the sensors around your stand or under your UV, then plug them into port one and two on your LDK FMM module. Plug the FMM into your apex, find the LDK task function, choose your FMM, select your sensors and hit send. I also like to rename my sensors leak one and leak two to make them easier to find, which you can do by finding the new FMM switches in the unused dashboard tiles, and then pull them down, click on their gear icon for each, and rename them. Now let's move on to making your UV sterilizer setup easier to maintain. There's a handful of maintenance tasks to keep track of throughout the year. I highly suggest that you schedule these maintenance tasks in your Apex calendar. The first and probably most important task to remember is changing the UV bulb every nine to 12 months, because if your bulb is not old, it's not sterilizing anymore. I split the difference and set mine to every 10 months by clicking on the calendar icon in the Fusion dashboard, adding a new event that says change UV bulb and setting it to reoccur every 10 months, then hitting send. I also created a reminder to clean my UV quartz sleeve every six months, which you might need to do more often if you see a bunch of precipitate or buildup on your UV sleeve. While at the same time, I'm also going to pull off my UV flow sensor and clean it out as well. So I added it to the notes for my biannual maintenance. More and more, I'm finding so many uses for these calendar reminders, especially when it comes to scheduling an entire year's worth of maintenance, but even more so for little things like remembering to refill the automatic feeder, which forgetting to do has burned me in the past before on the ULM tanks. There's a handful of other feeding tips outside of just calendar reminders that I share in this episode over here for you to check out, or if you just wanna see how many other uses I've found for things like calendar reminders, email and text alerts, sensors, solenoids, and a whole lot more, you can find them in the entire Master Your Apex series right here.